Most importantly, I want to touch on the factor that is probably the internal battle of most parents when your child is having a tantrum in public where everyone is judging you. Yay, that's fun. Uh. You wanna tell everybody what just happened? Uh. <laughs> Did you get a little bit upset? No. No? Did mommy get upset? Uh. Yes. <laughs> a little bit? Hey guys, so Today's video, I want to talk about the number one thing that as a parent we all go through regularly and that is toddler tantrums. Did you have a tantrum outside? Uh. Yeah, you did, didn't you? Were you listening? No, you weren't listening, were you? So we had to come inside. I was planning on making this video regardless today, but we just had a little tantrum and I thought, this is the time. <laughs> While it's fresh in my head, let's talk about this. So we were outside and Floyd was not listening. He kept trying to go behind the house and I asked him not to, even after I blocked it off. He loves to play with the cat outside and he was chasing the cat and then jumping on the cat and poking the cat with sticks and being mean. When I asked him to stop, that's when the tantrum began. So in this video, I just want to be clear, I'm not necessarily talking about how to deal with your toddler's tantrum. I'm talking about how to deal with the tantrum inside yourself. You want to go back outside, Floyd? Yeah, you want to put your outside clothes on? Are you going to listen to mommy? Well, if you're not going to listen to mommy, how are you going to go play outside? Yeah, but you need to listen, right? Right. Good talk. Talking to a toddler. <laughs> yeah. Ready? Yeah. Yeah, let's go. It's a nice stick. Hey. Yeah, it fell from the trees. You want to put it in your fridge? So the reason we actually came outside again, and I'm going to attempt this again with him, is because I actually have some seeds to plant, so I'm going to do a little bit of gardening. I decided I'm going to put sunflowers all along our fence to hopefully grow, well they, these sunflowers say they're going to be like 10 to 12 feet tall, and I thought that would be so cool to have like a sunflower fence. I don't know why I didn't think of that before. But before I get to my gardening the whole tantrum thing. While Floyd is screaming, crying, and not listening, I am getting so frustrated. All I want to do is respond with screaming, yelling. So there are a few things that I always try to, a little self-talk I try to have with myself while this is happening. I remind myself, which seems like common sense, but when you're in the moment, any parent I'm sure can agree with me on this, when you're in the moment and it's happening, it's really hard to remind yourself that they are only one years old, they are almost two years old, or they are a toddler and their brain is not the same as yours. They don't understand or think like you do at all. They can't, you can't reason with them. It's just actually impossible. Personally, the best preventative for a tantrum usually for us is to try to have the discussion about something that we know he might not want to do far before, ahead of time, before we're even in the heat of the moment, like the grocery store. We always talk about like, hey, we're going to go to the grocery store, we're going to go for a car ride, and we go about it because he's always like, no, no, no. But then by the time we get to the grocery store, he knows what's going on. So the grocery used to be a problem, it's much better now. It's the second thing I always talk to myself about is, he may not be able to find his calm, but I need to find my calm. If I get upset, it is going to cause him to get more upset, and then me more upset, and then we're both just past that melting point. So I really try to separate myself from his tantrum. If he's screaming and crying, that's okay. I walk away, I leave him there. Where if he's screaming and crying, as long as he's not gonna hurt himself or someone else, and it's a safe 
situation to leave him in, I will step aside, walk away. I mean, we live in a tiny house on wheels, so it's not even like I have another room to go to where I can't see him. I just separate myself and I take deep breaths. It's amazing what 10 deep breaths can do for you in any situation in your life. Amazing. It just helps me be calm so that I can more rationally deal with my emotions while he's having a freak out. Most importantly, I want to touch on the factor that is probably the internal battle of most parents. When your child is having a tantrum in public where everyone is judging you, yay. That's fun. This is how I personally deal with that. Everybody is different. I don't really care what people think. People can think whatever they want. At the end of the day, I may never see that person again in my entire life. And even if I do, people are gonna judge you no matter what. They're gonna judge you even if your child's an angel. They are going to be judging you constantly. And no one is going to agree 100% with everything that you do. It's impossible. You cannot please everybody. So personally, I just remind myself that people are going to judge and I have to tell myself that I don't care what they think. I'm not going to respond to my child in that situation based off my fear of being judged because I need to still be the parent that I want to be in that situation, not based on what anyone else is thinking, right? I know that's so, so hard. Like if Chad and I are out and Floyd is having a tantrum, I find my calm, I take my deep, breaths and I allow him to finish having that tantrum he's expressing emotions and he needs to work through that on his own like I said as long as he's safe and everyone around him is safe then we're good and I just think that in that situation trying to cut off the tantrum yeah it's gonna make it worse it always does it just makes him scream more because he doesn't he doesn't feel validated he doesn't feel like he's being like we're listening to him. And you might think that's crazy to say about a toddler, but they are just as, their emotions are just as important and valid as our own. So if he's having a tantrum, he's going through some emotion, he's confused, frustrated, and doesn't understand why he can't have whatever it is that he wants. And so you just gotta let it ride, let it ride out. Yeah, everyone's staring, fine, whatever. Who cares what the world thinks? I wish there was something I could say that would make that easier, but I know that it's one of the hardest things in the world, the fear of judgment. You are in control of your thoughts, feelings, and emotions, and if you don't want to feel something, all you have to do is tell yourself that you don't feel that way, even if you do. You have to convince yourself otherwise. Your self-talk is so important, remember that. along the back. Take your seat. Go over here. Yeah. Back here. Push. Yeah, here's another one. Pick a different spot. Go over here. Right there. Let's see you swing. Two hands. I guess the point of what I'm trying to say is it doesn't even just apply to toddlers. It applies in every aspect of your life. Your fear of being judged 
is going to hold you back from being your true self and making the decisions that you normally would without that fear there. <laughs> Live your life. Be true to yourself. Remember that you judge yourself so much harder than anyone else out there is judging you. Find your calm and hang in there. That's so nice. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. As always, I hope that you have a great rest of your day. We'll have a great rest of our day. And we'll see you in the next video. Yeah. Okay.